Well, welcome back again this week. We're going to confine our remarks primarily to an overall situation with uh, pointedly looking at a couple of things within that. One of the things that we've talked about quite often on these uh, videos is the fact that the South America, Latin America, is going communist. We're waiting to see the results of the Honduran election over the weekend, whether or not the right-winger, so-called, or the left-winger, which is really a left-winger, is going to win. Uh, preliminary results uh, show that Juan Orlando Hernandez, the right-winger, is ahead. But apparently, for quite some time, they've been thinking that it was quite possible for the left to once again resume its control over Honduras. Uh, this follows the pattern recently in Chile and, and other areas. One of the things that I w wish you would do is to go over to the New American. You're already on our site here. But uh, link on over to the New American World News Latin America or South America. And there's an article that we posted there on Brazil. Uh, and its title was Moderate President of Brazil Rallies Communist Party Forces. Now, what you will see when you get into that article is a link to uh, Rhesus of the, the president of Brazil talking to the 13th convention of the Brazilian Communist Party. You will see that she is braced by photographs of Marx and Lenin. And she is greeted warmly with an enthusiastic stand, standing up crowd uh, of communist delegates uh, to her speech and her appearance there. As you know, she is a former, uh, as they say, communist terrorist leader uh, who changed her due, got a business suit, ran for president, and is now elected uh, the president of Brazil as a Democrat. But here she is, now coming out more and more into the open, showing her true colors. She's never changed. Uh, she has remained an unrepentant communist. Uh, this is also true for her predecessor, uh, De Silva. Uh, he was the head of the Communist Party at one time. Uh, when the so-called death of communism came about, he woke up one morning and decided to call himself a Democrat. And so that's what he did. And so we have all these communists in the mix as leaders of Brazil. Uh, that does not bode well for the future particularly since Brazil is part of BRICS, B-R-I-C-S, which is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And so we see communist uh, leadership in those areas. Uh, India, it's Indian, uh, the Indian Congress Party. I uh, hope that you will look that up on the internet. You will find uh, some very strange beginnings of the Indian uh, Congress Party from the United States. I'll leave it alone at that, let you find out for yourself what I'm speaking of. But at any rate, we're being surrounded uh, by these nations. Uh, we're forming agreements with them, partnerships with them. And this sort of thing is being kept from the, the, uh, uh, the knowledge of the American people. Particularly this gal going in front of the Communist Party as president of Brazil and, uh, and, and appearing there. Not a word in the American press. I can find nothing. If there is something, even in the conservative press, uh, I am unaware of it. Uh, I don't look at everything. Obviously, you can't do that. But it's information that the American people need to know, and it's being kept from them. Now, why concern ourselves with things of this nature? That's over there, down there. It's none of our business, some people would say. Well, it is if they have constantly declared themselves an enemy of the American people, our Constitution, and our country. Uh, this is the case with China particularly. Every year the People's Liberation Army reaffirms the fact that we are the enemy. Uh, they're going into places like Brazil and Honduras and many, many other nations down there, Chile, uh, Venezuela, uh, giving them loans, uh, exploiting their minerals, uh, so on and so forth. And yet all of these things are aimed ultimately in destroying the United States. And so at home, we see the policies of our government doing things that absolutely make no sense.
It's sort of like disarming ourselves just before World War II, which, by the way, we did. Uh, we signed agreements and treaties which limited our Navy, uh, and it, it was a serious problem at the beginning of World War II. Uh, we did all sorts of things that led to mistakes, if you will, uh, errors of judgment, and so on and so forth. There are times when people keep making the same mistakes over and over again when you have to ask a serious question, and that is, are these mistakes, uh, like Obamacare, are these mistakes, do you honestly believe that these individuals in government made all of these mistakes and didn't know what was going on? What is going on with Obamacare is exactly what they had planned because the action is in the reaction. You see, if they make all these mistakes, all this bungling, all this ineptitude, then people think, well, gee, all they've got to do is straighten it out. And so what is the mantra today? We've got to fix it. Uh, we've got to do away with it and replace it with something else that works on the part of government. So all these mistakes are being referred to now as something that needs to be fixed. Uh, and so the action is always in the reaction. Make it look like you're stumbling and bumbling when in fact there is a purpose behind it. And that is to get the American people, in the case of Obama, to demand that government do something. And it's the, the same thing only in, in a, a little different way with our energy program in the United States. I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but it's just in the last few weeks, Obama has shut down arbitrarily, by edict, several coal firing plants around the nation, diminishing the, the ability of industry to have access uh, to energy if, by some miracle, we suddenly regain our senses and say to ourselves, wait a minute, we can't be shipping all of our industry out to China and signing even more treaties and more partnerships and more agreements under the banner of free trade that end up with less jobs, less uh, work, less uh, industry, uh, less manufacturing, et cetera, in our country. And we don't notice these things so much right now as we're switching and transitioning our energy into wind and solar. I just visited a farm in Upper New York this last week that had a, a windmill on, on it that was put there by a local uh, electricity company, of course under uh, the grants of tax incentives and, and so on and so forth. Well, when they turned it on and this thing started to spin, one of the rotors broke off. So now they've shut all of the, uh, the uh, windmills in that area because they may have de defects as well, so they're up there inspecting them. But the point is this, when it comes to wind power, the wind doesn't always blow. When it comes to solar power, there's something called night, and there's something called clouds that interfere with the amount of electricity that can be generated off of solar. Solar does have a limitation, and I'm not going to spend the time now talking about only so much power can be derived from the sun per square foot, but be that as, as it may. If we come to our senses and realize that, wait a minute, the world is becoming communist around us and is poised to attack us, and we have no industry with which to gear up to defend ourselves with. And even if we do, we've switched out of our energy sources, being able to even to produce the energy capable of heavy machinery needed in the time of war. It isn't that we've shut down our steel mills. It isn't that we've shut down mines or prevented mines from being open for copper and iron and, and everything else. We could always gear those things up, but we don't even, we're shutting down our electrical grid uh, you know, you can't, I know of one man whose total job is to go out and find alternative sources to wind power when the wind shuts down in his uh, area of, of the United States. Because if the wind shuts down, you have to have a continual energy source or the whole grid shuts down. So these are things that people haven't thought about. It isn't simply a matter of industry. We've got to have the electricity to run the industry. And instead, we're shutting it down. We're atrophying the whole grid that we've established across the United States for heavy industry. You can't run heavy industry on solar and wind power 
alone. It will not work. You can run your television set, you can run your lights, and that sort of thing. Heavy industry is a serious problem. We have to rethink these things. Keep these things in the back of our mind in total. Uh, here's a, a, one little aspect of a total international problem that we see inside our country. People don't connect it. They don't see how it's a problem if, uh, you know, Brazil's going communist, Honduras is poised, Chile is poised, uh, we have no heavy industry. Uh, what's that got to do with wind power? A lot. Until next week, we'll see you then.